There's a new Raspberry Pi now available. This is the latest version of the Raspberry Pi Zero called the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. The 2 is for second generation and as before the W stands for wireless. This review is going to be a bit different from some of the other videos talking about this model in that I'm not going to be performing benchmarks or seeing how well it runs graphical applications. Instead, I'm going to look at it from the point of view of a maker. How good is it for electronic projects? Can it be used to control a robot? Will it run from a battery? And does it have the performance needed to control NeoPixels? The new Raspberry Pi Zero 2W was released just a few days before Halloween 2021. I've only just been able to get hold of one of these, so I've just had time to try one project with it for Halloween. This features my Raspberry Pi wireless pixel server used to control two NeoPixel colour wheels inside a pumpkin jack-o'-lantern. For more details of the projects see the links in the description. There have been lots of different models and variants of the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to look at the ones that are most relevant to makers, concentrating on the latest versions of the main models. The first, the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a microcontroller created by Raspberry Pi called the RP2040. It's not a full computer in the same way as the other models. It doesn't run a full operating system, but it is good for electronic projects where you want to be able to control the hardware at a low level. And it is the only Raspberry Pi model with built-in analog sensors. There's no network available directly on the Pico, although you can get an external wireless con controller and some other boards such as the Arduino Nano RP2040 include wireless and the RP2040 on the same board. The next, which is the model we'll be looking at here, is the Pi Zero. This is a full computer and runs a variant of the Linux operating system. It's a small form factor and fairly low power, so it's good for portable projects. I'll be looking at the different models of the Pi Zero later in this video. Next comes the Raspberry Pi 4. This is more powerful than Pi Zero and it includes additional ports such as built-in Ethernet, four full-size USB ports. It's powerful enough to use as a desktop PC but it does need a lot of power so it may not be the first choice for a portable project. It's also larger. It's available in different models with different amounts of memory. The final one I'm going to mention here is the Compute Module. I'm not going to talk about this in any detail as it's not usable without either the development board or by including in your own custom PCB projects. As the design of the PCB for the Compute Board is more advanced, I won't discuss it further here. The Pico is good for simple electronic projects or where real-time performance is required. Its limiting factor is the lack of wireless and no HDMI output. The Raspberry Pi 4 is good if you need a powerful computer for demanding project, perhaps if you're running a graphical program. Arguably, a good compromise for maker projects is the Raspberry Pi Zero, which has the balance between speed, performance, size and power consumption. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2 is priced at $15, this is more than the Pico, but considerably less than the Raspberry Pi 4. It's only a tiny bit more than the Raspberry Pi Zero W it replaces. Now, I'm going to show three different models of the Raspberry Pi Zero. These are almost identical in size and the positions of the connectors. This is deliberate to allow you to use these as a direct drop-in replacement. First, the original Raspberry Pi Zero. When this was released, it was a game changer in terms of pricing for a single board computer. The model does not include wireless or the camera connector. The Raspberry Pi Zero W came next, which added wireless networking and a camera connector. And now the latest version is the Pi Zero 2W, which replaces the processor with a more powerful system in package processor known as the RP3A0. Essentially, this is similar to the processor on the Raspberry Pi 3. 
but instead of having the memory external to the processor, this is in one package, hence the name, system in package. Here's a quick look at some of the specs. It has the new RP3A0 system in package with a quad core 64 bit ARM processor clocked at 1 GHz. This includes 512 megabytes of RAM, potentially a slight drawback, which I'll discuss later. It includes wireless LAN at 2.4 GHz, as well as Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy. It has a mini HDMI output smaller than the full-size HDMI, but larger than the micro HDMI used on the Raspberry Pi 4. It has the same 40-pin header for the GPIO as used on other models, although you do need to solder it on yourself. And it includes a micro USB power socket. These are some of the accessories you may need. A micro SD card, for a full desktop, then this should be a minimum of 16 gigabytes. Although for a basic OS with desktop, eight gigabytes is sufficient. You could use the smaller for non-graphical versions, but I'd recommend those as a minimum. A HDMI output is a mini HDMI, so you need an adapter or an appropriate cable. Uh, you'll also need an adapter for the micro USB connector if you want to connect to the peripherals, such as a mouse and keyboard. And finally, you'll need a power supply with a micro USB connector. This new version of the Raspberry Pi Zero needs more power than the previous versions. So that's something you need to be aware of. Raspberry Pi have also launched a new power supply, which is at 2.5 amps, which is now the recommended power supply. Those accessories are the same as the Pi Zero. So is the size and the case requirements. So in most cases, you can swap a Pi Zero for a new Pi Zero 2, as shown in here with the Pi Zero 2 inside a standard case. Here's the project I've been using for testing purposes. It's a NeoPixel controller using a level shifter, which I've made on a prototyping board, which controls NeoPixel rings. I used my wireless pixel server for controlling these using a smartphone. This is a project I've been working on recently and there's more details in the links in the description. I used a fairly big portable power supply because this is one of my only power banks able to provide over two amps for the output. It provides an output of 2.1 amps, slightly less than the recommended 2.5 amps, but it is sufficient. And then a second one amp output which was used to power the NeoPixels. I had 16 NeoPixels turned on at a time, which was within the limits of the battery. I ran the project for a couple of hours and the battery was still, had plenty of capacity in it. This does highlight one problem in that the power requirements are more than the previous version. So you may need to increase your power supply. And if that's the battery, that may mean getting a bigger battery which you need to accommodate, such as if you're running on a robot. Fortunately, there are more powerful power supply options available now, and slightly smaller than they were before. But it is something you need to be aware of if you want to replace an older Raspberry Pi Zero. On the plus side though, the Pi Zero 2 is much faster. I didn't run a benchmark, but from the start it was noticeably much quicker, booting in around 30 seconds, less than a third of the time with the older model. According to the Raspberry Pi, then you should get around five times faster uh, than the previous version. My boot up in 30 seconds included booting to a full desktop, which you wouldn't necessarily need for this project, as it can be controlled over wireless but it gives you an idea of how much faster it is. The one thing I would have liked to have seen is more memory. 512 megabytes is not particularly much, but I understand this is due to a technical limitation of the system in package 
and the cost of implementing it in a different way. 512 megabytes should be sufficient for most maker projects, though problem may come if you want to run a HDMI output and have some graphical applications that need lots of memory. In summary, this is a much faster process and runs notably faster. It retains the same size, format and physical connections as the old Pi Zero, and it's only slightly more expensive. It still has only 512 megabytes of RAM, but that is sufficient for many maker projects. There is a trade-off to this, and I expect that it will use more power. This should be factored in against the improvements. All in all, this is a worthwhile upgrade to the Pi Zero, bringing it up to a good spec and should see improvements in what it can do and what you can achieve with it. I hope you found this video useful. All the links to the projects discussed are in the video description. I have many other Raspberry Pi projects in my past videos and I'll be adding more in future. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click the bell notification icon to get notified about my new videos. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.